Right, hello fellow DIYers. Today we're going to be replacing my busted four inch timer fan. Uh, I expect that the bearings have gone or the motor's burned out, but essentially we're going to be changing this with this. All right, so the tools we're going to need today is a tape measure, a little terminal. I like this one especially because it's got a little twisty knob on it. Terminal screwdriver, so you can put your hand on there and twist it without taking your hand off. Andy, if you haven't got one of those, you can just use a little knee on one. The important bit is is that the tip is narrow, so it's easy to actually terminate the cable. Right, Phillips, jab saw, uh, some screws plasterboard fixings, uh, pencil, test leads, test of voltage, and some cable ties. I'll run through what this is all going to be used for. Uh, but yeah, this is what we're going to need for replacing the fan. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, I'm replacing this with a timer fan that I bought from Screwfix. Um, timer fan, essentially what it does is it comes on with the light, turns off after a certain amount of time after the lights are turned off. And then you've got a standard fan, which is another different type. Basically, the difference is, is that the light turns on, the fan comes on. When the light's turned off, the fan turns off straight, straight away. So the difference is, is that this one will overrun for a certain amount of time once the lights are turned off. Another type of fan is a humidity type of fan. Essentially, what that does is pretty much the same as the timer fan. It will come on with the light, turn off after a certain amount of time after the um, light's turned off and then it comes on when it detects that there's quite a lot of humidity in the room. So either way, they're all decent types of fan. The most common type of fan you'll get is the timer fan, um, and that's what we're fitting today. Safety first, we're gonna be turning this fan off to make sure that we're not getting an electric shock. And you can see we've got an isolator, which is above the door. So this is what you'll have inside of your bathroom. So we're gonna make sure that that's turned off. Now there's no power going to the fan, and we're able to take this off the ceiling without getting an electric shock. All right, with this fan, I need to push into the back of it. There's a little hole. I need to push into the back of it and then slip the cover down and it comes off. There's a little hole. You can also see, absolutely filthy. So what else we're gonna do, we're gonna clean the tube that's above it, the duct, to make sure that that's all nice and clear so that when it's pulling the air up and out, it's not gonna be getting blocked by any of the, uh, the grime that's up there. Right, we've turned the power off of the isolator to, to make sure that we're definitely not getting a belt. We need to test the cables before we take it out. All right, if you've taken your cover down and you've got the older wire in, your colours are going to be different to mine. Don't worry too much, just use this as a reference. So where I'm testing the brown live against the earth for voltage, you'll be testing your red live against the earth for voltage. You're going to see this picture a lot because I'll reference this when we're doing terminations and other bits that this photo may help out. All right, so we're going to be testing our test leads first to make sure that they're operating. Okay, showing that they're working. We're gonna go on to switch live, which is this one that's covered in the brown sleeving, black cable covered in the brown sleeving. And then we're gonna test it against the earth that's in here. Okay, we've got no voltage now. Put it against the live, we've got no voltage. Now I'll turn the switch on. It's no exposed copper, so I'll turn the switch on. And you can see what we would get if there is power. So I'm in there. Okay, so now we know that these test leads are definitely working. And when that switch is off, there's no power going through it. Okay, here's the fun bit. So now I'm gonna unscrew these four screws that's in each corner. Take this one off, 
and then I'll take this one off. And then I'll get my favorite little terminal screwdriver. I'm going to give this tool of the day. We know it's dead. Yep, it's not insulated, but we're certain that the power's off. Turn it anti clockwise. Pull out the brown, which is our live. Get the cheeky neutral out. We've got the new colours here for a start. So we've got the brown here, which is the live, and then we've got the grey with the blue tape on to identify it as a neutral because it's got the blue tape on it. And this is actually our switch live. Um, you've got the black with the brown tape on it. I'll do a little diagram to show exactly um, how a fan is wired. Um, and at least that way you'll get an idea as to why there are three cables here and the earth and why they are identified as switch live and neutral. All right. So now I'm going to carry on with a messy bit. Get this fan down. With your new fan, sometimes these knockouts haven't been knocked out, which is where the cable's coming through. All right, so you will want to do that before you put your new fan up. In this case, they've done that. They've done a nice little neat hole, but it's quite possible that, that when I put the new fan up, it's not going to match where this is. In that case, I'll get my trusty pad saw and I'll poke a little hole to wherever it may be. But before you do that, you push this ducting up and out of the way um, and then take it over. But we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. For now, taking the fan down, we've got a duct. And I want to show you because it's absolutely minging. Look at that. So that's why I'm going to get my best mate Jack to get up now and clean him out as much as we can. All right, there he is. My good old mate Jack. Got a bit of a nose on him, but who's going to judge? All right, so we're going to get him up there and give it a good old over out. All right, Jack's done a lovely job of clearing the hole out. Although he's a little upset, he hasn't been picked as my favourite tool of the day. All right, so here's the fan that we're replacing. We can see in each corner that we've got the holes for the screws. And I've got a large hole there and a large hole there. For the cable entry which is really nice and handy so i'm hoping that i'm going to be able to use the old screws for the new fan old screw holes now we're going to use pencil to mark our holes and these plasterboard fixings you can also get these a screw fix or own base anywhere like that they're dead handy for jobs like this if you've got something like something light like a fan or I don't know, like a light picture frame or something, and you've got to go into plasterboards. These work really well. Where this terminates here, it's quite common for this to fall out. Don't worry about it. Cables are going directly into this like mini conduit here to the motor. So if it is hanging, it's not the end of the world. Right, let's see if we've had a stroke of luck. You can already see that we haven't, so perfect example. I'm going to push these cables flat up like that and push them out of the way a little bit like that because I now need to get the fan into the hole and see where our cable entry hole needs to be and also whether these line up All right lucky enough my holes in the fan to screw it up to the ceiling line up but unfortunately doesn't look like my cable is. You can see I have to make a little hole. So what I do is I just make a little channel across here to get my cable out. If yours is like way over here or over here, push the duct in up, get it out of the way, put your fingers above there where the cable needs to go 
make sure that you're not going to hit any other cables or a pipe or whatever and then drill a 10 mil or a 15 mil hole up there pull your cable through like that so you can actually push this cable right away up make your hole and pull the new cable down all right but for us we're going to just channel this bit out here all right first of all i'm going to move this cable out of the way right out of the way but still in a place that i'm able to grab it i can feel that there's nothing behind here that's going to cause me jip i.e a cable or a pipe to fill that so we just pop a bit of filler in that also all right we've got the hole filled nicely i use this lightweight filler here it's literally it's like candy floss the stuff's great i do now i'm just going to make sure that the fan is going to be square to the bathroom so i'm going to measure from one hole to the wall and then the same from that one now and that's the same so we know that it's nice and square When you're pushing it up, you want to make sure that you're getting it in there nicely and that none of it's going inside of the fan, inside of the propeller, because once you turn it on, it will start to make a racket. Once you've got it to there, get your favourite tool of the day and give the propeller just a light spin. You start hearing it flap and it sounds like it's hitting something that'll be the duct so you just want to push him out of the way right let's get the fan up there we'll just screw her up so with these plasterboard fixings you want to screw it and said it's tight obviously but don't over tighten it because what you do is you start turning the actual plasterboard fixing behind the screw and then if you ever have to take it out, you won't have as much luck. Okay, so we pushed the little chipboard and the termination back up into its position. So now what we're going to do, we're going to measure these cables off to the right terminals. Push the earth out of the way because, because with most fans, they're plastic and they're class two. So they don't actually have a termination for the uh, Live in there. Here we're connecting the brown, which is our live into L, our switch live into what's marked SL, and our neutral into N. All right, lovely. So we've got our fan fitted to the ceiling, all the cables are terminated. I just quickly want to go over how to adjust the timer on the fan. So this will kind of dictate how long the fan stays on for after the lights are turned off. You've got a little rotary switch here which you can either turn left or right depending on where the plus and minuses are it will be either side of this switch so if you rotate it normally the maximum length of time is around 30 minutes and the minimum amount of time i believe is around 30 seconds so for now we're going to leave the front cover off and we're going to turn it on from the fan isolation switch and make sure that everything is working Okay, great, so we know that our fan's working. Now, I'm gonna screw the cover on and have a good old clean up. Well, I hope this video has helped you replace your bathroom fan. In my next video, I'll be letting you in on a little trade secret on how to reinstate power quickly when your consumer unit is tripping. This electrician's number one call out and will save you a lot of money. So be sure to watch.